So this unboxing um, is new books out April 13th, 2021. They are distributed by Penguin Random House, but I believe this box is from Candlewood Press. So let's take a look. Um, and it's two books. It's a big box, but two books. Whoa. And the first is the new book by Caldecott winner John Clausen, The Rock from the Sky. And he does have a very distinct illustration style, um, you know, with, you know, with a hat theme. Like, I believe most of his books involve hats, if not all of them. Um, and so let's let's see. Um, looks like a turtle tortoise creature and then this other one, which I'm not quite sure what kind of animal that one is. This is also like a pretty, like more than your usual 32 page picture book. Um, and this is definitely from Candlewood Press. And so let's, we'll read the jacket flap. There is a spot. It is a good spot. It is the perfect spot to stand. There's no reason to ever leave, but somewhere above there is also a rock, a rock from the sky. So there we set up the tension in the story of um, standing and then perhaps something, you know, also approaching. So makes me think of like a meteorite or um, as it's falling from the sky, it's not like you're standing near a mountain, um, but it's definitely a rock. So uh, I guess it could be a meteorite. And so here we have our little turtle tortoise friend who's standing. And there's like a flower too. I just want to see. And then here's this rock that's literally falling, falling from the sky with little bits. Like, it, you know, I don't know. It doesn't appear to be near like a mountain, but like who knows. And, um, you know, it's invitation to enjoy this little turtle spot. And... Um, there's a premonition. This other creature is thinking, like, this might not be the best spot. And then there's another spot. It also has a plant. It's not a flower. And now they're in two spots. And, um, okay, so then they move. And then there's another creature. And then there's a rock. Um, so then there's the rock and it's, the rock is there and um, whoa what's this this looks interesting um there's a creature and the rock and things changing so I guess there appears to be Three creatures and the rock, and maybe this other, otherworldly creature as well in this story. And um, yeah, I mean, John Clausen can is like a genius for making a story out of something very simple and almost like, you know, like the plot almost has no action and yet it is so riveting, and there's so much going on. So it's a it's like kind of a genius of sim simplicity, I guess, combined with drama. And I think that's a hard thing to pull off. All right, let's take a look at the second book. This one is The House of Grass and Sky. It is by Mary Lynn Ray, illustrated by E.B. Goodale. And I feel like Candlebook Press had a couple of books out by, about houses lately because there's the house by the lake which that multi like four families living in a house in in germany um going through world war ii and then they had the haunted lake which is not really a house but has like sort of a you know where the setting is like the biggest you know as a big character in the story and so here like it's another story where the it appears like the character is the house. Um, but let's see. Let's take a look. So it is a house sitting in a field. And the house was full of laughter. And then it was empty. 
Um, and then people are coming, but they always say, so yeah, again, they have this theme of like history, like rooted in history, houses and structures, and the story is the setting and how things change over time. Um, and that circle of, you know, occupancy and emptiness and the story of the place being told by all the different people living in it going through, you know, a big chunk of time. So, yeah, interesting. But, like, also interesting, like, more than one. I wonder if it's the same editor who just kind of likes these stories. Because it's similar to, like, the Caldecott book, that one, about the lighthouse, where it's kind of a, like a setting and, you know, a history of who, who lived there. I don't know if that was a Candlewick Press book, though. Okay, so here we go. Here's the house, and this is when it was, like, brand new, being built, and people who lived in it, who did seem like a long time ago um, from the clothing, and then the history of the families that lived in this house coming and going, and the house just always sort of being there, and, um, you know, not being right for everybody. So it's like the house is dark and empty and, you know, who will be, who will be the right family for this house? And it looks like the house found, the house and the owners found themselves in this latest iteration. And it's of a diverse uh, theme, you know, because they're kind of showing, you know, in the beginning it was like a white family and then, you know, Many, many, many owners later, here is the new family, and they look black, and, you know, they like, like, you get this sense that they love this house. They're listening to what the house is telling them and wants to be, and discovering, like, the little treasures and the secrets of um, the house and, and previous owners, and, um, yeah, it ends up being, you know, sort of like a the perfect owner and um, the house continues like more happy memories of families who live here and love this house and make memories of their own. So yeah, that's nice. Um, so the author's other books are Go to Sleep Little Farm and the Thank You book. And the illustrator, oh, received the Ezra Jack Keats new illustrator honor. That's a, that's a quite an honor. Um, and these are out New England, too, as well, because Candlewick Press is located in Somerville. And here we have the author is in New Hampshire, and the illustrator is in Massachusetts. So two new books to look for. They are, they, they're out now, they, and they were available starting April 13th. And thank you to Candlewick Press and Random Penguin House.